everyone, it's Elizabeth Stevenson with New Direction Family Law, where we believe with change comes empowerment. Um, we not only provide expert legal advice and advocacy for our clients, but we like to surround them with experts and professionals that can provide support and services to help them have the life they want and they deserve. And one of those fabulous professionals and experts in our network um, is Mary T, and I say that because you have this last name that I cannot pronounce. <laughs> But Mary is a registered dietitian, and part of your description I like most of all is that you are a foodie, and you don't think of those two things going together, but um, you really um, make eating healthy, not bland and boring, but as we call it, and part of your workshop for For a Better Life is Eat the Rainbow. So welcome, Mary. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Come, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you got into to being the nutrition guru. <laughs> well, I've been a nutritionist for over 20 years, so, you know, that part of it I went to school for. The rest of it was life impetus, I call it. Life kind of threw me into a situation where I had to empower myself mm -hmm. to get my health back on track. And through that, I've learned to empower other people to get their health back on track or just to help them feel a little bit more vibrant. Right. And, um, you know, folks who are going through separation and divorce, that's really on the scale of one to ten. I think it's second under, you know, losing a spouse or a death of, of someone. And so eating well, taking care of yourself is so important during that time, but it's really hard to do, too. So um, what, what do you help people with in those situations to get them back on track like you got yourself back on track? What are some things? I think people encounter a lot of food stress in their day, and I help to clarify some of the food stress. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you know, you have to eat, right? and you want to eat, so it should be enjoyable. But for a lot of people, it's very really stressful. Right. They don't know what to eat, right. and the media doesn't no. help. <laughs> Oftentimes, doctors are well-meaning, but it's from their perspective, right. too, what worked for them. Right. Um, I really want to help people to decrease that food stress. Food should be fun. Food should taste good. It should be exciting. Right. There's the foodie part that's of me. That's right. That's right. I want my food to taste good. I want to enjoy food. Um, enjoying food is part of enjoying life, right. I think. Right. And, you know, part of it is if you're, um, if you're separating, you're divorcing, your life is really changing, you feel like you've lost a lot of control in your life. And so, you know, there are a lot of folks that have issues around food and control and that sort of thing, which can make it hard to eat healthy um, and do the right thing. Um, so if I was going through a day, what's the, what's the two things I can do to help me get started in eating right and feeling better about myself? Sure. Breakfast. <laughs> Breakfast is definitely the most important meal yeah, of the, the day. day. I tell it's, my son that every day. <laughs> yes, it, it truly is. It's your springboard mm -hmm. for the rest of your day. And with breakfast, you have the ability to balance your energy level, your blood right. uh, sugar mm -hmm. levels, just your vitality for the day. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have it or are you not going to have it? One quick uh, thought is that a lot of people like to get up in the morning, especially mm -hmm. if you have a family, right. get the kids ready, mm -hmm. get yourself ready, right. and then eat breakfast at work. Right. right. But that doesn't, uh, that doesn't honor your body, truly. That's one big thing people can do is make sure as a family that they're having something before they go out the before. door. Your body needs something within an hour of getting up in the morning oh, well, that's to jumpstart that blood sugar. If not, it comes crashing down and you're spending the day trying to put it put back, back up. up. So you're behind the curve already. And so exactly. then you start eating something maybe sweet or something like that, and then you get that quick high, but then you crash again, right? Exactly. Right. And it's that roller coaster that I really try to encourage people to get off. Right, get right, off right. The roller coaster. coaster. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some... Um, what are some quick things? So like I know in the morning when I try to get my child, we really do try to sit down every day and eat breakfast, but it may not be the most healthy of breakfast. So what's what are some quick sort of on-the-run things that people can do for breakfast? Think protein. Okay. You want to charge up those hormones in the morning with some good protein mm -hmm. sources. That can be a protein shake. Yeah. That can be some eggs. Eggs are nature's most nearly perfect food. <laughs> 
and you can do eggs in so many different ways. ways. That's true. Um, but think protein. It can be cheese. It can be yogurt. Right. Right. You need protein in the morning. Okay. To signal to your hormones, hey, I need some energy yeah. here. You need carbs in the evening to signal to your hormones. It's time to wind down. Oh, see, I didn't know that. No idea. I've always been taught. Well, I know you shouldn't eat late, but I've always been told you shouldn't eat carbs at night. So that's a new. I have never heard that. So and that's great advice. There's a huge science behind food and what you mm -hmm. eat and how it stimulates your body to either work for you or work against, against you. you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, it's, we're in January, everybody's made those resolutions, we all do, and um, sometimes we keep them, sometimes we don't, but um, what would you say to someone who really wants to start um, getting back control of their life and their diet? Is it the big picture? Can you, it, should we chunk it down? What's the best way to start? If you're used to, like me, eating the lean cuisine at your desk at lunch, and I want to change that, what, what can I do to eat better? Well, January is a good time to hit the res the reset button right. for everybody. You know, sometimes people feel guilty. Oh, here I am again. Yeah. It's January. Right. But, you know, we all need to hit that reset button and to give ourselves some fresh hope right. and to start anew. Okay. So January is a great time to do that. Um, everybody has their, their tweaks that they mm -hmm. can make mm -hmm. in their life. You brought up lunchtime. Lunch is just critical to do. Right. It's so easy to forget. Right? right. You just work right on through it's it. It's critical to do. We could <laughs> talk all day about all the good choices. Um, you definitely want to think fiber. Right. You definitely want to think some protein. Some mm -hmm. carbs are a good mm -hmm. choice, too. But just do, do it. Do it. Just do something. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Don't let it be 3 o'clock in the afternoon and lunch kind of escaped you. Right. And the one thing that um, you haven't said, which I love, is I haven't heard the word diet once. You know, it's because a diet, it's it's almost like if I can't have something, I want more of it. So I feel, you know, so that makes me get off and get back on the roller coaster. So what are some ways to sort of um, make it consistent? Is it portions? Is it, you know, calorie? Is it, what should I be doing to, to get more consistent? Well, that would take us probably the rest of the day to cover that topic. But well, let me let me start here with the thought that if you're talking weight management, mm -hmm. okay, which a lot of people in January are thinking, right. I'm just not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you two tips. Okay, okay, right, two right. tips that are going to be good for everybody. Great. Number one is vegetables. Mm -hmm. Okay, we hear a lot about fruits and vegetables. Right. I'm just going to plow right ahead with vegetables. Okay. Vegetables have so many good things in them. The more color, the better. Mm -hmm. But choose your vegetables uh, very specifically. You know, choose some organic vegetables. If it grows in the ground mm -hmm. and there's fertilizer in that ground, your veggies are absorbing that fertilizer. True. So yeah. organic is good. Okay. Um, if you can, if it has a thick peel that you can peel, you don't need to go organic, but with other vegetables you should. Pretty and much. aim for three. Three vegetables every day. Okay. Okay? That's a challenge. That three. is a challenge. Try to three think about that. <laughs> exactly. Um, the other thought would be 64 ounces of clean, pure water. water. Preferably not chlorinated mm -hmm. and preferably not fluoridated. Okay. okay, if you can get away from any chemicals in your water, that's going to be the best choice for you. That's great. Um, but 64 ounces, so that is what? About eight of these? Oh, my word. About eight of these in a day. <laughs> Truthfully, I was going to bring my big jug because what works for me is I have a big jug that I fill up at the beginning of the right. day and I just sip on it all day. And then it just and becomes habit and it. it's just what you do. So that's great. What you know, they've done research. Yeah, they know. Water is better than a cup of coffee if you want to charge well. your energy level. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but yeah, well, they've for done you. some research. <laughs> it is. It'll it'll pick that energy level up over time. So now you're your water that, uh, that's hard, but yes, absolutely. Now you're doing our first workshop, and it's um, February fourth, mm -hmm. and um, you mentioned that eat the rainbow. What do you mean by that? When you say that. Color, color, color. <laughs> Lots of color in your meal. Look at your plate today at lunch. Okay. And see if you've got some color in it. Look at your breakfast tomorrow. See if you have some color in it. Color usually comes with fiber. Right. And fiber is huge. Your body needs lots of fiber. And fiber is the forgotten nutrient these days. 
So I know. <laughs> <laughs> poor That's so fiber. Sad. <laughs> poor, poor fiber. So um, eat the rainbow has to do with eating variety. Right. Being picky. Um, but going all out with color. I like and that. when you look for those vegetables, look for color. And then it's also, you know, the half of the battle for eating is making it appetizing and pleasing. And when you see all that color, you're more likely to, to want to eat and engage and, you know, sit down and take the time to do that. Absolutely. That's great. So what, tell me a little bit about your, your practice and what you do and how you help folks who want to have a better lifestyle and eating lifestyle. Okay. Well, I've been called the traveling dietitian <laughs> because I work all over the state, oh, basically. Right. Oh. Um, and I have a traveling classroom. Okay. that I take to doctor's offices, chiropractor's offices, anybody's office that, uh -huh. that wants me to come and talk to their clients. Um, I do talk with clients one-on-one. -on -one okay. And just to help people gain their vitality back. Mm -hmm. um, and often it doesn't take huge changes, mm -hmm. but little tweaks. Okay. And do you help them, I mean, are, do you help folks with like meal plans and that sort of thing too? Because mm -hmm. sometimes that's where I get stuck. I get overwhelmed. It's like, Okay, I have to have three of these and five of these, but I mean, I'm getting home at six o'clock. So exactly. if someone could help me plan out that meal or that week of meals, that would be like a real godsend, really. Exactly. I'll give you a hint. Okay. Batch cooking. Batch okay. cooking means if you make chicken, you make three of them. Right. If you make hamburgers, you make 12. You can freeze, freeze them. them. You right. can do different things with them during the week, but batch cooking saves a lot of people a lot of time. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your workshop. Is it like your classroom? Is it going to be interactive? What do you? What, what can people expect? It's a workshop. <laughs> so people will learn. They will walk out the door at the end of it with lots of good ideas right. for them, personally right. for them. Um, because everybody comes in with questions. Right. Some of them will be the same, some will be different, but I want everyone to walk out of the door with getting their questions answered. That's great. That's great. And how can folks, I mean, how can folks get in touch with you if they want your help or want you to come out and do a presentation or a workshop for them? They can access my webpage. Okay. I'm sorry, my Facebook page. <laughs> Eat the Rainbow. Love that. And uh, also through your office right. for, uh, for a better life. Right, right. And so you can, um, Mary's going to be there in our workshop on February 4th. You can go to our website, www.newdirection.com, newdirectionfamilylaw.com, and click on the For a Better Life tab, and you can register for that. You can also get there through our Facebook page and um, through Mary's Facebook page. So we hope to see you there. Uh, Mary has some great ideas and some great tips. You helped me today, actually, and this is a little short period of time, so it's going to be great to see you for an hour doing that. So we'll see you next time, folks. Thanks. Bye-bye.